Hey everybody, I've got six packages here, so it's time for a mailbag. Uh, first up, no idea what any of these things are. I kind of went on an AliExpress bender, um, so there's going to be some randomness showing up. Oh, and this is one of those like AliExpress inside of AliExpress inside of AliExpress. All right, so we got three of them here. Uh, all right, well maybe, I don't know, we'll see how many we want to open. Uh, so we're going to open this one up. And we have, oh wow, that is not what I was expecting. <laughs> so, I bought this aluminum enclosure and uh, you can tell that I am a yank who doesn't know millimeters because I was not expecting uh, this project box to be this tiny. Um, I, I have a caliper and I have the ability to use it. So, um, you know, I probably should have done a little bit better measurement, but this looked like a really sweet, uh, aluminum enclosure and I will find a use for this thing but this thing is smaller than a deck of cards it is three and an eighth inches and um just shy of two inches so it is not a very big enclosure it does come with the little ends on it and some of that so uh yeah this is kind of funny um but it was free shipping so there's that and uh i mean i could put an esp32 in here or something like that so this is not all lost um and it does feel like decent you know decent quality it's not pinching when i squeeze it so uh, that is an aluminum enclosure let's see what else i got I, uh, this i don't know what else i would have bought that would have been this small so uh kind of interesting all right this is i have no idea i'm looking at it and i still have no idea uh one mil oh oh i do know what this is i feel like i don't remember if this volt log or pile of stuff got these i can tell the container is cracked um but these are those little teeny tiny um pin thingies in a broken container um and they're hollow i don't know if you can see that but they're hollow let me get you a bigger one here um and the idea is they can be used when you are desoldering components and straightening legs and things like that um on the components so they're little tiny pin things that you can push through pcbs you can clear holes out with them like i said you can do um you know straightening stuff and pushing stuff as you're desoldering and all that kind of stuff so this is a little set of eight of these and i think they were super cheap i think i don't know i don't know about super cheap i'll try to remember to put the prices up here on these things but uh yeah so anyway that's what these are again aliexpress bender um let's open this up here sort of oh okay so i've been kind of getting into ic's and playing around with uh different ic's and if you're interested in seeing that kind of stuff on the channel uh let me know but this is an assortment that I believe was like two bucks um, for the whole assortment. And so let's just kind of get an idea of what's inside here. And you guys will probably know what they are better than I do. Wow, those things are small. Um, let me get the magnifier out. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, getting old sucks. I, uh, I've always had like fighter pilot level vision. Um, I used to read my um, secretary, just jokingly, read her screen from another office away um and now i don't have bad vision in fact i went to the optometrist and i i'm not even low enough that i need a prescription but um definitely not as good as i used to be so we've got a uln 2003 and um that is a darlington transistor array this one should be a seven channel um darlington transistor i'm not going to pull them all out here but we have the uh, LM386, which is, let me look that one up. That is an analog input class AB amplifier. Um, there's some 555s in here. This is an optocoupler, <coughs> excuse me, like the kind that you would use on the little relay boards, uh, stuff like that. So what my thought is with these things is that I want to learn how to use these. Um, so this is probably the eight channel. Yeah, that's a 2803. So that would be, what would that be, 2803? That would be an eight channel NPN um, Darlington transistor array. But, you know, my thought is that I wanna pick up one of these chips and figure out how to use it. Maybe I'll make a little PCB, maybe I'll do something on a breadboard, but I wanna go through um, the stuff that I have and just kinda of play around with it. So this was um, just over $8 and there's 85 chips, I think, in here. So right around 10 cents a chip. Um, this was 
three dollars which seems pretty pricey for me to buy uh and this was three dollars which is a little bit pricey for me to buy but um you know again so <clears throat> What I did was I went on AliExpress and I searched kit with free shipping and under $10. So I just kind of looked through there and saw what could I get a bunch of that I could kind of add to my stash and, you know, maybe learn some things. So anyway, that is that. Um, next, we have this thing. I recognize this company. This Danu. Uh, I've seen their stuff on Banggood. I've seen it on AliExpress. But I've been really happy with the quality of the stuff that they put out. Um, so this, oh, okay, so this is actually from Banggood, and uh, I didn't realize it was this brand, but this is a multi-function tester. Um, and so, this is one of those things that's sort of like the kit. This is gonna have a video of its own. Um, it's one of those old transition testers. Trans, let me try that again. It's one of those little um, transistor testers, and I think transistor tester is a little bit simplistic for it. Um, without the package, but uh, you know, these things will tell you resistance and you know, will we'll just give you a lot of little statistics about the things that you have. And like I said, this deserves its own video. Um, but I really genuinely believe so. They asked me if I wanted this one, and I, I do have a different one, and I almost said no, but I genuinely believe that every uh, electronics enthusiasts should have one of these things i think i'll go ahead and plug it in and we'll just do kind of a quick look at it and then i really want to do a video on just this or maybe a couple of them together uh so what's neat about this one is it does have some kind of interface i've seen on it uh, maybe you just clamp them in here some of them i've seen have like a thing up here where you can plug in these little clips but i guess right now you could put it in the uh in the little zip socket so uh, let me grab some parts Okay, so this is the one that I uh, had before. It kind of looks like a kit, um, and but it is a really cool device. I find myself using it all the time. Uh, so much so that I hated the fact that it came with a nine volt connector, so I went ahead and just soldered another nine volt connector on the end of a power cord, and I use that now to power this thing. Um, this thing here, I don't want to put it through its full paces. I feel like it deserves its own video, but I am going to try to fire it up here. Um, that cord's a little, there's kind of a chunky end on here, so I don't know, it might come out. Um, let's see if we can get it to turn on. I don't, it doesn't feel like that's making a very good connection. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna put it in there. We're just gonna stick a transistor in there just so you can kind of see what it does. I don't even know what transistor this is. I literally grabbed the first one I could put my hands on, and I'm gonna test it. And it tells us it is a BJT PNP, and it gives us uh, the various statistics about the transistor. So um, I think it can test other things. Um, I think I can come in here and just like stick an LED kind of anywhere um, and tell it to test. And it'll tell us that it's a diode and gives us the forward voltage and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, kind of a neat little thing. I don't know how esoteric of things it can test. Next up, another one that is a total mystery to me. Uh, let's get this thing open here. And what? Oh, okay. Um, so in a previous mailbag, I got another one of these little things. I'm gonna do all the crinkling at once. I got another one of these uh, magnifying things and just didn't like it. And so um, I asked other people what they used and Pile of Stuff said that he had this one and liked it okay, I think were his exact words. Um, so, oh, there we go, okay. Uh, I sort of, again, as somebody with really good eyes, I don't like um, not being able to see everything. So when I put on any kind of glasses, I'm not used to having the same you know, vision that isn't consistent. So I sort of wanted something that would kind of trap my eyes in uh you know and sort of shade out anything that wasn't uh being magnified i thought that might help with some of the distraction does not come with the two triple a batteries uh this is going to take a little bit of doing on my part to see uh if i like it i do have a video where i'm getting ready to look at a whole bunch of electronics components so i'll probably be testing that in this video but this was about 12 dollars from ebay and uh a pile of stuff gave it the okay thumbs up Actually flying through this stuff a little faster than I expected to be. Um, let's open up this one. And 
we have, oh, sweet, okay. So, um, as many of you know, and many of you don't care, I have been uh, getting into retro computing, and uh, one of the devices I have, I opened it up in a previous mailbag, is a um, is this thing called an XT-IDE, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. If you are into retro computing at all, um, you want this thing, and I suggest you get the one that has this little um, bracket on here, because I've seen people put them in backwards and kill them. Uh, but this thing will basically allow you to, to hook up an IDE hard drive to any old computer. And it comes with, this one came with a, a compact flash card that is, um, already had DOS on it, which was super handy. So, uh, basically you can have this as a hard drive and you can boot off of this. You can also hook up a regular IDE drive or two of them if you don't have the card plugged in. Uh, I'm not going to get all into the nerdiness of that, but if you if you know, then you know and you want this. Now, these were relatively cheap. It's kind of hard to find these smaller uh, compact flash cards. For those of you that don't know, compact flash is actually based on the IDE standard. Um, so that's what makes it really good for using in retro things and stuff like that because they're basically there's not a whole lot of conversion going on. So um, anyway, I got a couple of compact flash card so that I can have different operating systems, different kinds of software on these things. And uh, we'll see. I don't know if these are any good, but they were like three bucks a piece. So happy to have them. Next up, uh, let's see. It feels like there's something all the way to the edge there. Uh, so we're going to slice it open. See what we got. IC straightener. Okay, so this um, is cool but i've got something better coming uh so this is an ic straightener i've had uh i had some chips that were a little bit bent up and um i think they can do both kinds yeah so i had some chips that were bent up and in fact i saw a bent up chip in this thing here um and obviously you can straighten them by hand and this isn't going to do a whole lot about straightening them uh, left and right if they're bent that way but most chips come in a little bit splayed out and you can bend them on the table and do different things like that. But this is a uh, tool that is made to help you get them in line uh, a little bit better. And so um, the fact is, I'm just going to tell you the whole story. I was kind of jealous that Pile of Stuff and um, Simple Electronics both got these beautiful handmade chip straighteners from a dude named Larry. And... Um, you know, the, just a beautiful, I mean, just really fine woodworking type things. And, uh, and they were awesome. And then it turned out I actually needed one. These things are really hard to come by. I don't remember if I bought this off eBay or Amazon. I think I bought it off Amazon. Um, but I needed to straighten out a bunch of chips, not just one or two. And so I got this one. This one has the ability to do the, the double wide and the single wide chips. And uh, so, but anyway, Larry agreed to make me one. Now he had up to this point had only been making the ones to do this size chip, but he agreed to make one that would do this size chip, which uh, this is actually, I don't really need to bend this one. This is a uh, an NEC V20, so like an 8086 CPU. But um, I'm doing a lot with EEPROMs, and uh, this is the size of an EEPROM. So he agreed to make one that would do up to this size. So I am super stoked about getting that. I have no idea when I'm going to get it in. Um, just super appreciative of him to custom make me one. And uh, yeah, so, but in the meantime, I have this piece of junk. So it'll do, but um, this is just a placeholder until I get my legit one. Uh, next up, I'm going to go ahead and do this one, number six. Now this is going to require me getting up again. Um, you know, the internet is a very cool place sometimes. And let's see here. <laughs> uh, writing goes, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So down like this. So, um, this is for a very popular old hard drive that I just got to get up and get it. This is the Seagate ST225 MFM with uh, two card edge controller uh, connectors hard drive. And so this would have been something that would have been really popular in IBM uh, PC or XT, the original ones. And the way that it worked is the last one in the chain needed to have 
this resistor. And I could find good information about other ones, but this is probably one of the, oh gosh, what am I doing? Like bending it. Um, this is probably one of the most popular hard drives ever produced, like single model, uh, most popular hard drives ever produced. And, um, you know, I could not find this little resistor. And the way this thing works, I wanna make sure, because I did just bend that pin a little bit. Um, the way this works, is the last drive in the chain, I just realized I did that off camera, professional YouTuber, um, the last drive in the chain needs to have one of these terminating resistors on it. And a terminating resistor is a fairly common thing. You used to do it in networking, uh, sometimes you do it in DMX lighting and stuff like that. But the idea is that you want to uh, prevent reflections and stuff like that on the control lines. And so the very last device needs a resistor. Now there's a million different ways they could have done it, but they chose to make these really weird resistor packs that someone lost um, on this drive. So I was not able to properly terminate the end of the drive. And so um, this kind fellow named uh, Mr. Layton was nice enough on one of the forums to agree to mail me one of these things, which is just incredibly nice. He had an extra one laying around. He taped it to an index card and mailed it to me. And that is why I love the internet sometimes. There's just some nice people in the world. So I appreciate that. And I'm gonna be sending him a thank you. Um, next up, I'm gonna go ahead and just open this one up. I was gonna save it for the next mailbag, but I've got so many mailbags that I haven't edited yet. So uh, <laughs> anyway, so this is, um, some Dymo labels, which in and of itself would not be that exciting, but they are, and they're still not that exciting, um, but they are an odd size. Uh, and I hope I got this right. They are basically, what are they? Not basically, they have an actual size. I can tell you the actual size. They are, a size is not on here. They're, they're basically, oh yeah, two and a half by two and three quarters which is a strange size, but I have a reason to have them and I'm gonna have to get up and walk again. You may have seen in my office tour that I have about 30 of these things. And I've started organizing my stuff and now these are yellow, but they're the same size as red, so don't judge me. Um, but what I was looking for were some labels that I could put right about here on the end. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and rip one off um, that I wanted to be able to put on the end and I really hope these things fit. Uh, but I was looking because having all these, con these containers is nice, but it doesn't mean Jack, if you don't know what's in them. So that, I think if I got that on their dead center, um, that would work. So I can actually label these things and, uh, know what's in them because I have them stacked vertically. Um, so this would allow me to know what's in these things so I can spend less time shuffling through. So these are the Dymo labels that I got from Amazon. So I think that is it in the mailbag. Now I do have a whole bunch more AliExpress stuff coming in. So I'm gonna be getting back to the old school mailbags, release these next couple of them. But uh, I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you're having a wonderful day.